All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all for coming. This is Steps to Success. We wanted to recognize and thank you all for being collaborators and contributors to us and our program to continue to help students. As you can see, most of us are here. Some of us are in the back. Yes, please raise your hand. All right. So once we get done, we'll have some delicious food. Hopefully you got some coffee and some cookies. Um, but I wanted to start a little bit with the history of Steps to Success and kind of how we came into being. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting story. A couple years ago, I was in Kathy Wright's office, and she is the person who runs distance learning. And myself and Mark Westland, who is CIS faculty, were having a conversation about students having difficulty with digital literacy and coming into the college and needing to be able to use Canvas and my academic plan and fill out the application process and do FAFSA. And then once they're in their courses, they need to be able to use Alex and Reading Plus and the strain that that was causing on students and the angst and how we were losing some of our students. And those that were surviving was just that, they were surviving, right? And so their college experience would be a lot more enriched if they were given the tools to be successful. And how could we do that? How could we do more? We're already doing so much. And oftentimes, as well, if we have money, if we have a budget, we can do these things. That's often is what is said. And so for me, I kind of thought about it and I said, you know, well, do I really need money to make a difference, to make a change, to go above and beyond? I don't think that I do. I think if I just give a little bit more of myself, make myself a little bit more available, then maybe we can make some change. And from that, Steps to Success was born, which was really interesting. And when it started, it was just the three of us. Didn't know that I could hire students. I didn't find that out for about a year. <laughs> <laughs> kind of dangerous. Don't tell me that I can do something, because I will do it. For me, I was a student here back in 1997. And at 24 years old, I was a brick mason. And for those of you that don't know my story, I actually built the Walmart on McWilliams in the Safeway. But I fell off the scaffold at 24 and destroyed my back. And that was the end for me. 24, only have gone to the ninth grade, GED at 16. I'm scared to death. What do I do? I've got to come to college now and reinvent myself. But I don't even feel like I belong here. So one class that I took, in the summer of 97. Intro to how to use the internet. That's all I took, because I didn't have that skill. But I also didn't have the soft skills, I was bitter. I was resentful that I was hurt and I had to come in and have to reinvent myself. I'm here with 17 year olds and 18 year olds that are more concerned with where they're gonna party and what they're gonna do. I've already had my first daughter. And so I went through my associate degree and I didn't really use any of the resources that existed on campus. There were counselors here, John Babo, uh, and many others. But I didn't use those resources. And so when I finished my associate degree, it really wasn't worth the paper that it was printed on. Because I, I wasn't employable. So I had to go and work on my bachelor program. There I started to get those soft skills. Decided to go into management. Hmm. Okay, so I've got that. I was always an entrepreneur at Spirit. I met my wife in Ann Brackenbush's calculus class. <laughs> kind of interesting. And we tutored students and made a little side money off of that. So a business seemed to be a natural fit. But after that, we decided we'll go into our master's degree. So the deal was, well, we can't get married until we get our master's. So okay, let's go ahead and do it. So I went into education. My dad being an educator, uh, my grandfather being an educator, hmm, I fought that as much as I could, but somehow I followed in the footsteps. They're both uh, Baptist ministers, I won't follow in those footsteps, <laughs> at least not right now, but we'll see. Somehow your parents end up being right sometimes. Uh, but once we finished our master's degree, before, we couldn't even go on our honeymoon, I got offered a job at the Navy and started working there. When the contract ended, I started my own company uh, to consult uh, veterans and their dependents and active duty members. 
And then I decided to come back to OC and wanted to give back. Because at the end of the day, the master's degree, bachelor's degree, it means nothing without the associate degree. That was my foundation, that was my base. So OC means a whole lot to me, it's everything. And I live in this community, my daughter lives in this community. And so I wanna leave a legacy and I can leave the legacy <laughs> through the people that I affect. So interesting enough, enough, many don't know what I do on this campus, they just know that I live here. <laughs> In 2012, I came on and I started off as a part-time advisor for a prop tech program. Uh, in a year's time, I was teaching for business management, then general studies, then digital literacy. I was doing internships through the Career Center. Now I'm teaching Career to Success Pathways. I teach at WorkSource on Mondays, PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. So now I have a myriad of jobs on this campus, and I'm a nightmare for payroll and HR. But what it allowed me to do is see how students interact with the college and myself at every touch point, from the beginning to the middle to the end. When they come in, scared to death, unknowing, uh, starting this journey that is so high stakes for them because they need to recreate their lives just as I did. And this may be the only way for them to do that, to the middle while they're in their courses, suffering through. The opportunity cost of being a student versus going and going to work. And then of course at the end, when it's time for you to demonstrate all the theory that you know and now to apply it for a potential employer. And so seeing that, I felt like there were gaps that existed. The loss of EOC and some budgets and everything else. What could be done? And so this is what can be done. So I'm not going to talk anymore about that. I just want to give you a little bit of a history. But I do want to pass it on to the students because it's called Steps of Success. And it is all about the students. So it's me and it's them. But really, it's all them. 